summarize the session um, that to summarize the discussion that we had in the morning uh, we started with uh, the branch of engineering sciences and the importance of strength of materials and the other names how it could be called what are the application of strength of materials uh, the definition of stresses different types of stresses definition of strain and different types of strain and the relationship between uh, these two uh, and the importance of material and the loads acting on that and apart from that we had also seen uh, the different uh, stress strain behavior and what is elastic uh, limit what is plastic limit uh, what is the relationship between stress and strain through hooke's law we also seen we had also seen the different types of uh, behavior of material in terms of elastic and plastic and relationship between uh, the, the different types of stresses in terms of yield strength yield stress ultimate stress and breaking stress and apart from that uh, other than uh, knowing the different types of stresses we also came to know and understand uh, a different mod elastic model different modulus elastic modulus uh, bulk modulus and rigidity modulus and the relationship between these three and finally uh, the design parameter the main key factor that emphasizes the importance of strength of materials is the factor of safety that is the most uh, researched topic about uh, the factor of safety because still there is no uh, uh, proper solid conclusion one could make before the design but based on the uh, experience and design of experiments this factor of safety value is also fixed and now let us continue uh, uh, seeing another term called poisson's ratio so whenever the tensile load is applied on a material if there is a uh, change in the dimension along the transverse direction that causes strain and there is a contraction uh, in the longitudinal direction that causes strain longitudinal direction so the strain that is caused in the transverse and longitudinal direction can be related with the poisson's ratio mostly in the negative value uh, so it is represented as uh, transverse strain or lateral strain divided, uh, divided by uh, longitudinal strain uh, so the theory of isotropic elasticity mostly this uh, poisson's ratio is considered whenever a uh, different type of material or even the same type of material is being used in construction and also in uh, mechanical design so the maximum value taken is minus 1 to 0.5 and here are few uh, values of poisson's ratio of a material is given from steel to uh, cork and uh, one example for uh, the application of poisson's ratio is how a different metal can be choose can be chosen to uh, for the practical application you could have seen uh, a cork uh, in the glass bottle uh, will be used to hold a liquid under great pressure so that's an example for a uh, poisson's ratio and similar type of application can also be seen in most of the engineering design and now <clears throat> Uh, we can actually numerically evaluate all those stresses on the strain by taking a few example problems. So all these problems are taken uh, either uh, from P. C. Purmeya or uh, R. K. Bansal. Strength of materials from P. C. Purmeya and uh, R. K. Bansal. You can refer there uh, these type of similar problems that will be available. I'll quickly go through by just going through the problem. So let's say uh, we are applying a, a load on the bar and we need to calculate the elongation of the bar. Or, or, or element or a plate so the elongation can be very minimum or it can be uh, huge so depending upon the type of uh, the element and material property of the element the elongation can be calculated simply by taking the load of the the load at which uh, the member is and uh, the load on which the material has been experiencing its cross-sectional area length and modulus of velocity with this value we can actually find the value of the elongation so this is the common expression that could be used if the material is made up of same type of uh, material 
So this is one such problem which is given, where a uh, rod of 15 centimeter long, the two centimeter diameter is subjected to an actual pull, uh, uh, axial pull of 20 kilonewton, and the modulus of velocity of the rod is given. From the modulus of velocity of the rod, it is understood that it is a type of a steel rod. Stress, strain, and elongation of the rod is calculated, and just by using the load. Upon cross sectional area will give you the stress, and the change in the dimension with respect to its original dimension will give you strain. And the elongation can be calculated by using this relationship between the uh, delta and load length, cross sectional area, and modulus of velocity. So, this is one such example you could see. And uh, this is for a steel wire if uh, the material is of uh, very smaller quantity and it is subjected to an axial tensile load which means uh, a spring uh, a wire is suspect, uh, suspended with a 10 kN bar with a modulus of elasticity and uh, the length of the rod is given length of the wire is given and we were expected to calculate the value of uh, the elongation right and this is another problem like similar type uh, Okay, let's. Uh, we so till now we were focusing only on a similar type of load acting at one single point, or uh, mutually uh, opposite direction, or in the same direction. What happens to a body, or a material, or a, a structure if it is acted upon by different set of forces, different values of forces? Let's say imagine uh, a five strings are knotted at the center, and there are five different people pulling out uh, the uh, rod but all these rods are connected at the center all the wires are connected at the center and five different person or five different people are stretching or pulling out in different direction what will happen to the rod and what kind of uh, deformation that will be happening in the rod in which direction it will be expected and how can we anal uh, analytically calculate or evaluate the value of uh, deformation stresses in the strain so in order to understand that, there is a, a concept called principle of superposition, where we can actually calculate and evaluate the values of uh, the deformation of forces or stresses. So they, uh, according to this principle of superposition, when a number of uh, loads, it could be a different type of uh, different amount of load that is acting on a body, to evaluate this, the strain can be evaluated based on the algebraic sum of strains caused by the individual loads. Like how we have uh, equations of equilibrium, uh, principle of superposition uh, works in a similar way. In order to calculate the values of strain acted upon by a, a different sets of uh, loads or forces acting on the body. Uh, so in other words, uh, when an elastic body, this could be applied on elastic body and also on a uh, on a composite or a different types of body, provided the value, of the material property, and physical parameters of the material is known to us. So this is an example that is given. Let's say we have a three different material, uh, three different cross-sectional uh, uh, area, and three different length of the material being applied by two different forces or uh, one or more uh, forces. The elongation can be calculated not by using delta is equal to PL by AE. Instead, we need to uh, combine the param physical parameters of the material used or the structure has or the assembly has in order to calculate the elongation. So in this case, uh, if the loads are common, if the P is, let's say, P is 10 kN, 10 into a length by cross sectional area and modulus of elasticity of material 1 or section 1, sorry, section 1, section 2, and section 3. From this, we can also, uh, from this type of assembly, we can also calculate the value of uh, the elongation. From the elongation, we can also calculate the value of stress. And if one of the parameters is given and the other, other parameters can be found, but let's say the elongation is given and the load is given, we can even calculate the value of. Uh, the modulus of elasticity, right? Uh, so this is uh, given as a composite bar, one of a, a practice problem or a tutorial problem. This composite rod has uh, is thousand mm long, with the two ends uh, 
with 40 mm square, 40 mm square and 30 mm square. We need to understand it has two different cross sectional area because the load applied is not transformed through the uniform cross sectional area because here the cross sectional area is completely different and even the length is also different. One section is 300 mm long, the other section is 200 mm long. And uh, the middle portion of the rod has uh, a 20 mm, uh, 20 mm square uh, with 500 mm long. So there are three cross sections. So this is the actual assembly. So uh, here you could see there is a tensile load uh, acting along the axis, 1000 Newton. And we were expected to calculate the total elongation, providing the value of modulus of elasticity. So just by accounting the section one with 40 mm square, with a length of 30 mm, 300 mm, uh, and the section 2 has 20 mm square with a length of uh, 500 mm. We can easily calculate by using this principle of superposition using the relationship between uh, the deformation uh, and the load that causes the deformation. We cannot simply use or consider the complete assembly thinking that load divided by area will give us the elongation. Uh, this is not only about uh, uh, the assembly which has a different cross section or uh, a different length. Uh, it also talks about the principle of superposition can also be applied on a two complete different assembly. For example, the problem taken here is uh, a steel rod uh, of 20 mm in diameter which passes through a steel tube of 25 mm internal diameter and 30 mm uh, external diameter. And this is a kind of a composite assembly where the cross sectional area is different. Even uh, the load applied on the assembly is uh, different. And it's not a complete solid section because it's like a tube assembly where uh, uh, the rod is inserted in, inside the tube with the bolts, right? And load is applied on the top. The load applied on the tube is 20 kilo Newton and we need to calculate the stress of the tube and the rod. So though the assembly is one and the load applied is one, we can experience different types of stresses. All right. So, and there is a condition that when the, uh, uh, the nut is tightened and this makes uh, the moment of uh, the assembly. Right? When the bolt is tightened, it moves. And because of this, the stress is also developed. So when we analyze this particular assembly, this is the given condition. And uh, the bolt moves. And when the compressive load is applied on the assembly, it creates a tension. Because of the load applied on the tube, it makes uh, the bolt move. And uh, it doesn't mean that only compressive stress can be observed in this particular assembly as a result of the resistance of this particular assembly towards the applied 20 kN. So when we closely uh, uh, analyze this particular assembly with a steel rod inside a, a tube, steel tube, we could, we could also see the compressive load applied on the assembly will create a tensile kind of effort, uh, effort or effect on the uh, bolt, which makes the bolt move. So as uh, when the load is applied on this uh, assembly, which is compressive, we, uh, it is, doesn't mean that the resistance force offered should be again uh, compressive in nature. So depending upon the setup or an assembly or a structure, we could see the resistance of the assembly towards the applied force. So based on this compressive load on the tube, which gives an action, uh, on, uh, by giving uh, by observing a tensile load on, uh, on the rod, we can easily calculate the relationship between these two by taking compressive load on the tube and the tensile load on the rod, which creates compressive stress on the tube and tensile stress on the rod. So just by comparing these two stresses, by uh, taking uh, the general relationship between stresses and the strain, we can create a relationship between rod and the tube. From that, we can calculate the value of uh, stress. And also, we can calculate the value of uh, 
the increase in the stress is when the load is applied so uh, we cannot directly take the definition or the concept of stresses and the strain and apply over any composite part so it depends as i told you a material or a group of material which forms an assembly will react under the action of forces in a different way based on the uh, type of material uh, or a grouping of material as a composite structure this is one example which will make us to understand uh, the way how the assembly reacts towards the applied loads right so what happens if the material has different cross sectional area uh, 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 like a trapezoid one has a, one has a longer uh, side and other has a shorter side and because we do know that stress applied on a cross sectional I mean load applied on a cross sectional area will uh, will give a proper or a definite amount of stresses but what if the cross sectional area is not same for an for a material or an assembly because we could see this in mo mostly in engineering structures where the cross sectional area will not be completely same for example when we take up a uh, residential building of g plus 5 the load of five story is simply transferred through the foundation and when we when we see the entire area of uh, the solid mass above the ground the building it is huge but that load and the stress is equally distributed through the foundations and the footing that is safely transferred to the ground down below the ground right so uh, how to evaluate or analyze these type of process or uh, this type of element with different cross sections so uh, let us take up uh, this particular uh, tapering rectangular bar with a cross section with the longer side as a and shorter side as b and the load applied as p and a is the width at the bigger end b is the width at the smaller end and e is the modulus of elasticity and t is the thickness of the bar so if we have a section with a different cross section and uniformly tapering at ta tapering rectangular bar the elongation can be calculated using this relationship pl by modulus of elasticity thickness into a minus b where a is the longer of width and b is the shorter width so the logarithmic scale of uh, uh, longer width divided by shorter width this will give us elongation when we have the elongation we can even calculate the value of strain or stress by give by knowing the relationship between by knowing the equations uh, and the relationship between stress strain and modulus of elasticity so this is another problem um, uh, that talks about uh, uh, different cross section like tapering at one end uh, which will have width varying with uh, both ends so here you could see longer with is 25 mm and the shorter with this 30 mm and the load applied is 40 kN and the thickness is k how to evaluate the deformation or elongation we can even calculate uh, by using the relationship that we had seen before now let us take up an element which deforms based on its own self weight imagine um, okay uh, Yes, let me post a question. But uh, most of the civil engineering faculty can easily relate. I'll stop sharing first. Okay. So uh, in um, surveying by using the chain, the uh, chain we used to measure the length. But now nowadays we are not. No one is using chain. to calculate to evaluate to measure the length or to survey we use tapes or we use total station to calculate or measure the distances but earlier you would have seen while using the chain uh, there is an error uh, that is to be adjusted because of sagging and the same thing is also have uh, the same thing can also be applied in uh, leather tapes or normal tape so because of the uh, because of its own self weight it it either has sag and that will also be accounted right so similarly a few engineering materials would also um uh, deforms or uh, reacts based on its own self weight right 
uh, one example is let's say if, if, uh, if the found a if the soil bearing capacity or geotechnical property of the soil is not properly accounted before uh, constructing the foundation or the footing the footing settles because of its own self weight the reason is the soil uh, which is supposed to bear the weight of the foundation of the footing footing the substructure fails and that leads to the deformation of or the settlement of the foundation of the footing similarly can you give any other example uh, by relating this because of the self weight there is a deformation because of the self weight you could observe the deformation is there any example that you would like to quote it here any replies from your side and it is so unfortunate to ask question post lunch session okay uh, uh, most of you would have gone through i mean gone to the beach and you would have stand close to the uh, waves so the moment the waves comes and when you are still standing in the same place you would feel like going down when the water resides yeah, right so what's exactly happening is uh, when the soil in comes close contact with the water it it loosens up because of the water that is absorbed down below your feet you would feel like going down right so that is because of your self weight imagine uh, because of its uh, because of the self weight or the huge weight of the body it deforms right uh, the other example uh, is a tower crane which lifts a uh, huge weight and if the weight of the material that a tower crane lifts due to the construction activity is more than the resistance offered by the steel wire that used to lift the weight it deforms or sometimes it it fails so in order to account that kind of deformation because of its own self weight this relation should give us uh, an idea to evaluate the elongation of uh, the body because of its own self weight even without the action of forces so uh, uh, the relationship given here is elongation or deformation delta is equal to w l by 2 ae where uh, w is the weight of the material a is the cross sectional area l is the length and e is the modulus of elasticity and uh, this deformation under its own weight uh, when we calculate that when it uh, when we calculate that with with the same body when it is uh, applied with the load it will be half all right so when we have, uh, when we are calculating uh, a different cross section uh, let's say if it is a conical bar the same of uh, uh, equation can also be applied like wl by 2 maximum area of the conical bar which means we are accounting um uh, the uh, conical uh, bar means which will have a shorter opening uh, or a smaller sir, opening sir are you sharing the screen yes yes this world no screen is not visible yeah, sorry sorry for that yeah so this is the equation that gives the relationship between the elongation of a body due to the self weight and when we measure uh, the deformation of the uh, uh, material with its self weight compared to when it is applied with the load it will be half and if we are evaluating the elongation of a conical bar the same equation can be applied by considering the maximum area of the conical bar which means considering at uh, considering both the shorter and the longer opening so stress will vary the main idea of going through all these relationship is stress will vary based on the even the cross sectional area because stress uh, the load applied on the material uh, will be directly applied on the uniform cross sectional area and if the cross section is not uniform we cannot use the same relationship between stress load and the area and uh, this is the uh, relationship that uh, gives uh, a relationship between the factor of safety and uh, stress so uh, the working stress is denoted as sigma w which will take the value of factor of safety from 1.5 to 2 depending upon the complexity of the structure 
so uh, the factor of safety uh, is also defined as uh, sigma uh, sigma y or sigma p or sigma alt you, you could see sigma ultimate is the ultimate stress which which uh, is defined by the load maximum load that a material or a structure can take so that is called sigma ultimate ult and sigma p is a proof stress and uh, sig uh, sigma y is the working stress the factor of safety could also be related with these three types so there are uh, certain limit where uh, stress is calculated up to a certain uh, limit of proportionality but beyond that the stress is also uh, observed in a material before failure or at the point of at the time of failure so factor of safety is also giving a relationship between these different types of stresses uh, and uh, if you have experience in working in testing the uh, concrete for uh, modulus of elasticity even there are three different modulus of uh, elasticity initial tangent modulus secant modulus and chord modulus right so initial tangent modulus will be calculated with between the elastic uh, uh, behavior of the concrete cylinder and uh, secant modulus is calculated below the uh, yield point right and there is a modulus of elasticity that will be calculated at the ultimate stress level so factor of safety is also been considered for the worst scenario if considering the failure of an element or a material or a structure as a whole and okay uh, uh, do we have a different type of uh, relationship when it comes to a composite where two different material with the two different material property is being used uh, we can also there are a lot of uh, practical case studies that is available in cases of failure when we go for a composite structure right and let us take up a building a civil a residential building uh, even if it is a g plus 1 uh, building it is made up of one or more different type of elements even in rcc there are two different elements steel and concrete and even in the concrete there are different type of uh, material that is used to make a concrete cement then with which will have a different physical property density is completely different fine aggregate and coarse aggregate the material and the physical property is completely different but the ultimate aim of combining all these different material is to perform a single action is to give a, a, a stable condition under the action of the load and even if the expected load increases it should not fail immediately like deck of cards so uh, i hope you would have seen uh, uh, you would have played with the cards and the moment when the card is not properly balancing the entire decks it would immediately collapse just uh, just like that so no no engineering structure is expected to have a complete sudden collapse even the same thing is happening uh, same thing is also been tested in case of automobile uh, where uh, head on collision will also be con conducted on the designed uh, automobile so designed uh, car or or something under collision they would also be testing using finite element approach to see the stress distribution of individual components right from the uh, uh, front till the uh, rear end of the car and how does it collapse how does it fail so and uh, uh, in in the automobile industry there are different varieties of material and type of material that is being used to take up not only stresses due to the load due to the friction or due to the uh, vibration even the stresses is also been evaluated based on the increase in the temperature because of the uh, movement of engine and engine components so in those cases we need to also think about analysis of stress or calculating or evaluation of the stress on composite section which means it the, the section would be made up of two different material it would it will have different uh, different modulus of elasticity uh, the material density would also be different and uh, the way it behaves is also different for example uh, nowadays uh, the flask is available in uh, two different layers right the outer layer will be steel and the inner layer would be copper and there would be a huge Uh, vacuum between the steel and the copper in order to maintain the temperature of the hot water or the or, or uh, the fluid uh, which is in 
cold condition so the uh, so that the the temperature of the fluid inside the flask either it could be hot or maximum uh, in, uh, completely hot or completely cold and the external temperature could not be completely felt so even uh, that is one of the application that i would like to quote here so in those cases how can we analyze stresses because when you have copper and steel and if it is exposed to temperature in addition to the temperature uh, due to the applied load uh, the stresses will also be developed because of the stress due to the stresses with, which we will be seeing after this slide but right now let us focus on the stresses on the composite section right so let's say let us take uh, this uh, composite section section 1 is of different material and section 2 was a different material but both has the same length and the load is applied on the composite assembly let let us take up a cylinder uh, with uh, hollow cyl I mean, uh, cylinder filled inside a tube right with the two different materials this is the cross section and the load is applied how to evaluate or how to, how to analyze the stresses when we take up this composite bar or a composite section so the total load acting on this particular composite section is equal to individual load acting on the section 1 and section 2 so the total load that is uh, applied on the total uh, composite section will be equal to individual load act, acting on the individual section so with that relationship we can also calculate by using the relationship between stress and strain right by using the general relationship between stress and strain of the same material by considering the two different material as one single composite section so here you could see a steel rod of 3 cm diameter is enclosed centrally in a hollow copper tube so there is a steel rod uh, that is enclosed in a hollow copper tube with external diameter 5 cm and internal diameter of 4 cm so this total composite bar is subject to an axial pull or an axial load of 45000 newton and uh, the length of the bar is given we are expected to calculate the stresses in the rod and the tube and load carried by the by each bar so here uh, is the pictorial representation of the given problem so here you could see the copper tube and there is a steel rod inside and the entire composite assembly is subject to an actual load actual load here that is mentioned as actual pull which means uh, the load is pointing in downward direction which is causing a tensile pull right and the load is 45000 newton and we were expected to calculate the stresses and the total i mean individual load acting on this particular assembly copper and tube so we know the relationship between the stresses and the strain right and uh, when we look at this particular assembly and the load is applied which tends to elongate and which tends to contract combining or uh, between the steel and the rod when the load is applied which uh, which is very lighter so that it can elongate quickly just by applying the load so when we compare these two we have a, a load on the tube and the load on the copper that would cause the total elongation right so uh, the load on the tube will cause stress on the uh, load on the steel uh, rod causes the stress on the steel rod which will be not Uh, which will be not or which will be not similar to the uh, stresses that is experienced by the copper because steel is a uh, different set of property because it has different modulus of elasticity and copper will have different modulus of elasticity but by combining the relationship between stresses of any material we can relate the stresses acting on the steel tube and stresses acting on the copper tube by using the relationship total load acting on the composite bar p is equal to the load of uh, uh, composite 1 load acting on the composite 1 plus load acting on the composite 2 combined together will give the elongation of the complete assembly using that relationship we can get the load acting on the steel rod and the load acting on the copper tube just by looking at this relationship so from this uh, uh, we know the relationship between uh, stress 
area and the load. So load uh, stress is equal to load divided by cross sectional area. Since load is already known, uh, from that we can calculate the value of stress on the steel tube, stress on the copper tube. You could also see, though the load applied on the assembly is one, but the stress exhibited or created on the uh, individual steel and the copper is completely different. This is particularly due to the nature of the material that has been used, which is nothing but steel rod and the copper tube. So from this, we can easily calculate the value of stresses or uh, if, if a material is given, but it is not uh, completely defined by its type. Let's say uh, we are designing a, a complete new composite uh, without knowing the pet, uh, uh, material property. Just by knowing the value of stresses, we can even determine the material property of the complete composite assembly. So this is in case of two different materials that has been used as single assembly. And uh, you could relate civil engineering uh, material, uh, civil engineering structures. Now we use uh, steel concrete composite uh, or uh, concrete infilled uh, hollow or circular columns or beams and uh, and also pre-engineered buildings we use uh, steel sheets combined with the con reinforced concrete or concrete with uh, fibers which is uh, which is also been used and also in uh, road construction we use different materials with the different uh, modulus of elasticity there are many different uh, there are many uh, uh, examples that i could quote on and on all these are made possible only by understanding the behavior of the material and also the strength of material. The next one is uh, uh, the major focused area in terms of mechanical engineering. And a few of the civil engineering uh, structures or elements are also been focused uh, uh, due to the temperature effect on the element or the material or on the structure. Um, now we are talking about uh, the material that could provide thermal comfort, right? In civil engineering design, and even in architect, most of the architectural principle also chooses material based on the thermal behavior uh, of the chosen material. Uh, so this particular slide will give you the relationship between uh, the stress strain and the temperature. So as I told you, uh, apart from the load, even if the material is not applied with the load, just by the change in temperature will create will create uh, stresses on the strain in that particular material depending upon the type of material let's say if the material is not completely affected by the temperature thermal stresses and thermal strain will is negligible and it, it will be completely ignored but in case of the material that is affected by uh, the temperature uh, thermal stresses and thermal strain must also be evaluated even concrete uh, a few uh, uh, building components or few building structures uh, will be evaluated for uh, thermal stresses and thermal strain. So to define uh, what is the meaning of thermal stresses and thermal strain is, whenever the material undergoes uh, noticeable changes due to the change in the temperature, changes in the context of elongation of the contraction, that is called as uh, temperature stresses. Right, the stress uh, uh, that is observed because of the change in temperature is called as temperature st stress, and because of the temperature, if there is a change in the dimension, and that change creates uh, develops a strain that is called as thermal strain. So the relationship between uh, strain and uh, the temperature, a uh, thermal strain, and the temperature is given as uh, epsilon is equal to alpha into delta T, where alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. Epsilon is the strain. So sigma is uh, used to uh, denote the stress and epsilon is used to denote the strain. And uh, this is the relationship between uh, temperature stress and the temperature. Thermal stress and the temperature. So like thermal strain, uh, which is equal to uh, coefficient of thermal expansion alpha into delta T, uh, thermal stress or uh, temperature stress is related to alpha E into delta T, where delta T is the change in temperature. So this is called as thermal strain and this is called as uh, 
thermal stress and it is also called as uh, temperature stress stress developed due to temperature and this is one uh, pictorial representation how a material can be uh, deformed under the action of just temperature so there is no there is no you could also see there is no load acting on uh, element a b and c you could see just by increasing the temperature there is a deformation delta l that is happening so this is a pure example for a thermal strain when there is where there is a change in the uh, length because of the temperature right so this is another example uh, tutorial problem that you could see it here uh, at the end of the session i'll uh, also share the slide along with the links of the video to the coordinator you can get it from the coordinator so this tutorial problem uh, will also uh, give an uh, idea to evaluate the stresses in two different materials in this case you could see there is a material 1 and material 2 and uh, let's say steel and copper are uh, assembled together as a single assembly right and uh, when there is a temperature increase both the materials are not expected to behave under the action of temperature so we need to understand uh, the stresses that is experienced by material 1 it could be steel or copper a material 2 same as steel or copper so type of stresses can must also be understood so based on the value of uh, coefficient of thermal expansion the stresses could be either compressive or tensile depending upon the assembly so you need to also understand the type of thermal stresses happening if there is an elongation that creates a uh, increase in the length that causes uh, tensile stress and uh, when the two assembly is for example if copper and steel are welded together and these two assembly is used in a structure it could be a building component or it could be in a building structure or it could be in an automobile and there is uh, when there is increase in the temperature uh, uh, one material will tends to expand very quicker or very fast when compared to the second material in case of steel and copper right uh, let's say if the copper tries to expand first the steel which is attached to the copper will tend to rest, uh, restrain the elongation of the copper so the tensile the temperature stress which is tensile in nature in copper would be arrested or restrained by the Uh, compressive stress or the resistance that is offered by the steel towards the copper under the same temperature so we need to also understand the type of elongation when the temperature is changing so based on that uh, stresses thermal stresses and thermal strain must be evaluated in order to understand the behavior of entire composite assembly so this is one such example where copper uh, there is a sandwich type of assembly the steel is uh, in the at the center uh, with the two copper plates at top and the bottom and there is a temperature increase and here there is the condition if the temperature is raised by 80 degrees celsius find the stress in each material and change in the length right here you could see when the copper expands so the free expansion of the copper uh, because of the th coefficient of thermal expansion which will make copper to expand uh, very quick but there is a uh, steel rod at the center so this behavior in the copper and the behavior in the steel would make the entire assembly with the two different set of uh, stresses so here you could see free expansion of the copper uh, is happening because of the compressive stress in the copper and free expansion of the steel uh, is happening because of the expansion of the uh, uh, steel plate because of the increase in the temperature and uh, here you could see compressive stress here you could see thermal stress which is compressive in nature uh, uh, thermal stress which is tensile in nature so based on this and using the relationship we can also calculate the values of stresses at each material copper and steel just by understanding uh, thermal stresses and type of thermal stresses based on the uh, elongation or the expansion under the action of temperature or when there is a temperature change
and here other uh, uh, other example is given uh, here is the steel uh, sorry a uh, rod with, uh, which is connected by copper steel wire and the load is applied as uh, applied is noted as 200 km so here you could see because of the load applied and uh, there is also an increase in the temperature There is a coefficient of thermal expansion of steel is given, and because of the weight, because of the coefficient of thermal expansion, it tends to expand and elongate. And here also you can calculate the value of, of the elongation of the complete assembly, total elongation, and elongation in individual copper and steel. You can easily understand being a teacher just by going through the slide. So till now we have uh, seen uh, stresses, stra uh, strain under the action of load, stresses and strain under the action of temperature or when there is a change in the temperature. Uh, here comes a, a different set of uh, perception or a scenario where stress cannot be calculated when the cross-sectional area is not completely identified or when the load acting on the body is completely different and uh, how to calculate those type of stresses and strain so uh, the concept that we are going to discuss right now is called or uh, is uh, termed as principal stresses and strain so before going uh, into the uh, details about principal stresses and strain uh, did anyone have identified this type of failure in concrete cylinder or in concrete cube when the load is applied just look at the picture, then I'll unshare and get back to you about your experience in order to get your reply. Okay, just look at the failure of the failed uh, cylinder, concrete cylinder. This complete concrete cylinder is tested under compressive testing uh, machine, CTM. And after uh, the failure, the sample is taken and uh, the picture is Taken. You could see the cross-sectional area is completely different. And when the load applied is completely uniform. So here this is the load applied on the cylinder, which is uniformly, dis I mean, uniformly distributed on the cross-sectional area. But here the failure is observed like this. All right. Now I'll unshare. I'll come for the discussion. So why is this happening or have you have you seen this type of failure in anywhere, not only in concrete cylinder, it could be any type of sample. Have you observed this type of failure anywhere while testing? Can you see your hands up? Okay, per okay personally I have, see I have seen uh, this type of failure and even one of this uh, concrete cylinder actually failed with the bursting sound because of the uh, because of uh, the using of different material uh, the, the material completely crushed into pieces and powdered unlike it's kind of a brittle failure like how we drop a, a glass panel so that particular concrete is not a normal uh, traditional concrete it was made with different material and the failure was completely different and even if, uh, uh, even right after the first initial crack, there is there is no evidence of uh, plastic deformation of that particular sample. So the reason is load sometimes will also be acting on a different failure uh, can happen in different cross section. In order to understand and evaluate uh, the failure. Based on uh, based on the type of failure, we can also calculate the uh, we can also observe the stresses in which direction it is maximum in that particular sample. So in order to understand that, we need to we need to also know the different types of stresses in terms of principal plane, principal stresses and strain. Right. So in previous uh, uh, slides, we had seen. Uh, tensile okay. stress, compressive okay. stress. Sir, screen, screen is not oh, yes, sir. yes, sir. 
So in previous slides, we had seen uh, compressive stresses, tensile stresses, and shear stresses, where uh, the cross-sectional area, the load acted upon that particular direction is completely known. And that stress is easily calculated divided, uh, by taking the relationship between load and cross-sectional area. There are a few cases where uh, a load can be acting on an unusual plane or a plane with a different angles or different orientation. So uh, the principal stresses and strain should be understood. So the plane where uh, there are no shear force acting is called as principal plane. So this is a shear force. So the plane where there are no shear force acting is called as principal plane, which is marked in green color. And these planes uh, will have uh, zero shear stress. Tau will be completely zero. And this plane will carry only the normal stresses, which means the direction of the stresses will be completely perpendicular to that particular plane. So uh, in order to define principal stresses, principal stresses are the maximum and the minimum value of normal stresses. The so maximum could be observed in one plane and the minimum uh, uh, Stresses would be, normal stresses would be observed in other plane with the negative uh, direction. So the maximum and the minimum value of the normal stress on a plane when the material is rotating to a definite angle where there is no shear stress. So that is called as principal stresses. So just compare these two, you will easily remember principal stresses. Right. And these principal stresses can be evaluated or determined by two methods. One is analytical method, the second one is graphical method. Graphical method, uh, most circle is highly uh, used for uh, defining the principal stresses and the strength. Analytical method, these are the uh, following uh, slides I'll be sharing with, with you for calculating analytical stresses. You know, to understand the same uh, 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 principal planes and principal stresses, uh, we would have at least uh, uh, in our life we would have gone through one uh, CT scan or MRI scan. That's a perfect example for uh, 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 an oblique plane where uh, complete cross-sectional view of our human anatomy can be taken and that can be seen in uh, images, right? So this is in uh, sagittal plane and this one is coronal plane and this one is transverse plane. An oblique plane is one which is not parallel and which is not, uh, uh, which will not have a right angle. So it can be having, it can be cut to any different section like this and this. So uh, though we are uh, designing the material or the structure, expecting stresses to be acting at a point or on a plane, or even if there is an orientation, the stress would have a different uh, action on that particular cross section. Sometimes um, there will be a complete different scenario where we cannot even uh, identify the location of the maximum stresses in the particular structure or in an element. A perfect example is whenever the earthquake happens, right? Uh, whenever there is a accident or a collision, you could see sliding and overturning of the vehicle. And uh, when, whenever there is a sudden collision between um, impact forces on the structure. So there are so many case studies that could also be easily re uh, related towards the importance of uh, evaluating the stresses in different planes. In order to understand that, in order to evaluate analytically by using set of equations, uh, these slides will give you an idea. So the, here you could see the stresses acting in a normal plane where the cross-sectional area is completely parallel to the plane. In the place where uh, the stresses are acting in an oblique plane, we cannot calculate the value of the stresses just by using the relationship between load divided by area. In those cases, we need to understand principal stresses and the plane in which it acts. Right. So these are the relationship uh, that is existing for a normal stress. Sigma is equal to load divided by area because the cross-sectional area is completely perpendicular to the application of the load. That's a normal stress. But in case the stresses is not normal, 
we cannot use the same relationship so this is the normal stress this is the tangential stress so we need to know the orientation uh, or the angle of the oblique plane by knowing the angle we can calculate the value of normal stress in this particular cases and tangential stress and uh, here you could see only two type of load acting uh, uh, the tensile load is acting on the structure on the element or the chosen sample there are multiple cases where you could see load acting on all different direction there are stresses that could also be acting on all four sides in those cases how do we calculate stresses so these are the different condition that you are uh, seeing right now the first one is member subjected to direct stresses in only one plane here you could see sigma 1 is acting only in one plane and case 2 when the member is subjected to direct stress in mutually perpendicular plane you could see both in x and y both positive and negative direction and the third one is member subjected to stresses and uh, sorry simple shear stresses there is no uh, normal stress but you could see shear stress tau and the last case is combination of all the above so direct stress in one plane direct stress in mutually perpendicular plane along with simple stresses on all four direction how do we calculate the values of stresses so the when for the first case sigma can be calculated the normal stress can be calculated by taking sigma 1 plus sigma 2 where sigma 1 is acting on the left hand side uh, left direction in x plane and the sigma 1 is the uh, uh, stresses that is acting on x direction in positive x positive direction so sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 plus sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 in cos 2 theta plus tau the tau is the shear stress and theta is the angle made by the oblique plane so this is for a normal stress and this is for the tangential stress and in order to locate the principal plane we need to also note the value of theta so to calculate the value of theta this relationship will give you so that uh, it will make us to identify the location of principal plane but here you could also note that the value of theta would be zero because in principal plane shear stress would be completely zero uh, this is for uh, the second case where member is subjected to direct stress in two perpendicular uh, mutually perpendicular direction with simple shear stress this one all right so in those cases the value of uh, the angle of the oblique plane can be calculated using this relationship uh, tan theta sin 2 theta and cos 2 theta and from this we can also calculate the value of major principal stress and minor principal stress major principal stress will have uh, the value in positive uh, value and minor principal stress will be substituted with negative and uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 are Uh, the stress is normal stress is acting in uh, x x direction both positive and y and tau is the shear stress so in this way we can also uh, uh, calculate the value of major and principal my major and minor principal stresses if the stress is acting on oblique plane um, one example uh, that uh, i could i would like to relate is let's say there is a uh, pole flag that is designed using steel hollow steel tube right and based on the wind velocity we can just predict a uh, based on the wind velocity that is uh, available the wind velocity data that is available for the past 10 years we can just predict the direction of the wind flow but in case if there is a hurricane or if there is a cyclone the direction can be uh, the direction of the wind could be in any direction but the stresses that the a uh, flag pole that is that can be uh, experienced in a worst scenario can be uh, calculated by using these type of uh, equations and relationship we cannot generally use uh, the stress relationship with load and area just by taking sigma is equal to load divided by area we need to think about this and even von mises criteria uh, a failure criteria is also available where one or more type of material is used with a different geometry uh, to understand that 
earlier we had building only with rectangular shape uh, sometimes square shape and uh, even be and uh, beams and columns were designed with rectangular square and circle and now because of the uh, because to, to increase the aesthetic appearance of the building the building columns beams are having different cross sectional area and uh, it will be very difficult for someone to identify the uh, maximum amount of stress that a structural element can experience uh, when the load is maximum or under worst scenario in case of natural calamity in such cases this equation will help a designer uh, it could be a civil engineer or it could be uh, a mechanical engineer to locate the maximum stress because when we uh, identify the maximum stress that a structural element or a structure can experience we could possibly predict the failure and the type of failure that the element or a component or a structure could face so that we can even improvise the efficiency of the design by including the material or by improving the engineering property of the material uh, in the context of tensile behavior correct right. and uh, we need in, we need not to also uh, increase the tensile pro property more because we need to uh, make sure that uh, both elastic and the plastic behavior should be observed in the structure let's say if you are focusing more on elastic behavior the building would bend like a uh, uh, pole and it would come back and it would deviate it would wave whenever the load is applied we do not want to have a building like that imagine uh, if it bends like a, a steel rod for the minimum load and when the load is released it would suspend and it would wave to and forth that is also not expected so this is uh, to find the maximum shear stress in case if the member is subjected to uh, both direct stresses and shear stresses so these equations are similar but it Uh, there will be a slight difference between uh, between the equations and also to find the value of the oblique plane theta angle right so this is the equation to find the maximum uh, shear stress in case of the body or a subjected bo body or a structure that is subjected to direct stresses and direct shear stresses so from this equation we can calculate the value of tau and also tangential maximum tangential stresses so so far we have seen uh, the uh, principal uh, stresses and principal strain and uh, different condition in which uh, the oblique plane is also acting right uh, so the uh, to reiterate the same point is given again here So member subjected to direct stress in one plane, uh, member subjected to direct stresses in two mutually perpendicular plane, uh, with the shear stress subjected only to simple shear stress, and subjected to direct stresses in two mutually perpendicular direction along with the shear stress. Same equation is repeated, uh, and it is simplified. So that is simplified completely: normal stress and tangential stress for all the four conditions. So this is. uh the analytical part where we can uh, evaluate the value of uh, stresses if the stress is acting uh, other than the normal plane so the second one is called as uh, graphical method where uh, no equation can be used instead you can directly uh, draw and find the value of uh, the stresses maximum and the uh, maximum stresses in the material or in the structure when it is subjected to load um let me play this video so that it will be easy to visualize and understand how the mohr circle will be so this is the procedure to draw the mohr circle so here a typical example is taken uh, with sigma x as 100 mpa and sigma y as 30 mpa and how to, uh, how to draw the mohr circle and find the value of uh, stresses and the strain principal stresses and 
So in the x direction we have uh, sigma x as 100 MPa, and in y direction we have uh, sigma y as 30 MPa. So this is the condition like uh, the member subjected to mutually perpendicular uh, direction plane sigma x and sigma y. So how to uh, get the va value of principal stresses just by graphical method. So this is the uh, uh, normal stress and this is the shear stress in x and y direction. So in the previous figure we have sigma x is equal to uh, 100 MPa and the sigma y is equal to 30 MPa that is taken and that is drawn graphically here. We go to a as sigma x which is uh, 100 MPa. And the sigma y is taken as 30 MPa and that uh, 30 MPa is taken as sigma y. So this is in the positive direction and that is in the negative direction. So with the midpoint of A, B, that midpoint is denoted as C and this C as a center and C A as uh, C A or C B as uh, C B as a radius, we are drawing a circle and this circle is called as Mohr circle. And in order to find stresses at any plane using this drawn Mohr circle, of that particular material, we can find it graphically just by following the procedure. And from CA, we uh, we mark up a straight line, and that that will be dropping on the x-axis, and connect that point uh, to the O, and that distance is the distance O A is an armless stress, and that is expressed as sigma D. And the vertical distance that from uh, D to uh, the distance that falls on the x-axis is called as shear stress at D. So at any point, if I want to calculate, if someone wants to calculate the value of stresses, both uh, uh, normal stress and the shear stress or the tangential stress, this more circle could be used just uh, by having the details of sigma x and sigma y. At any point, one could calculate the value of stresses. But analytically, this is not possible. Anyway, uh, I'll show you the difference between graphical and analytical methods. So this distance that we are seeing, uh, O, D, is the resultant stress at the point D. So using this uh, coordinate sigma d and uh, tau d, we can also calculate the value of uh, stresses at any point. But here when you see, here the stress is acting only at this point. Let's say if I want to calculate, is the slide is uh, a shared one? Is the slide is visible? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So here uh, the drawback uh, or the advantage of uh, going for more circle when compared to analytical method is we can calculate only the stress at this particular point or a plane. Unless or otherwise if the oblique plane is not calculated, we cannot determine the value of uh, stresses at any any point of any point in this particular material or a structure or an assembly. 
but in more circles just by knowing the value of uh, normal stress and the shear stress or the tangential stress graphically we can calculate the value uh, and we can get the value of uh, the stresses uh, normal stress tangential stress and uh, resultant stress so that is the advantages of most circle and even in most of uh, mechanical engineering application most circle is highly used and that is also the results are also validated using more circle as the uh, predicted or a calculated or evaluated value of stresses are in close relationship with the experimental value so the same uh, uh, explanation is uh, that you see that you have uh, seen in the video is available in the slide how to draw and how to uh, get the value of stresses right and uh, the application of more circle is also given as i told you uh, when uh, there is a group of assembly and we need to find the maximum moment of stress we to, we need to calculate particularly if the section doesn't have a proper geometry uh, the application of more circle has a strong influence in evaluating the value of stresses and uh, the last uh, part of discussion is about uh, periods of failure because uh, all these uh, significance or the importance of knowing the different types of stresses strain is to avoid failure but uh, as an engineer we uh, we have sustained uh, failures just by learning them from the past case studies and also from the history and just, uh, only by knowing the type of failure and the uh, behavior of the structure under failure the engineering design principles uh, have have uh, reached the maximum efficiency and also innovation and uh, so in order to understand and avoid failure we need to know the type of failure uh, that uh, that any structure or engineering structure uh, could could be seen okay um before getting into this last part of the uh, discussion of theories of failure uh, have you noticed any natural caves fail under the action of seismic forces due to earthquake unless otherwise if it is completely uh, drastic so when there when the earthquake is uh, completely drastic have you because we have been seeing uh, earthquakes in uh, most of the asian countries and uh, once in a week in japan uh, we have one of our alumni studying in japan and he is to update update with the values because every uh, commercial and institutional building will have uh, Uh, the sensor that tracks the intensity of the earthquake that the building uh, structure experiences so you'll take a photo uh, photo of the earthquake whenever it is recorded and you'll send a snap and i'll be asking uh, uh, how are you used to this earthquake because there is a definite movement that could experience when uh, the uh, earthquake is more than 3 uh, or 5 with the scale and he said so every uh, people in japan were properly trained and uh, every now and then they will have like how we have uh, uh, instruction or uh, notification during the pandemic we are mask and whenever you go out said try to maintain social distancing so they were uh, right from uh, the school till the uh, post graduation or even uh, in every institutional building everyone will be properly trained for this type of scenario so my question is have you have we witnessed any type of failure uh, when it comes to naturally formed cave or even you could also take an example of naturally not naturally termite structure so you uh, but in south we used to worship that uh, based on our religious uh, belief but when the ground moves we could not observe these natural caves or uh, the structure that is built by termites and even there were so much of bio mimicry design principles uh, most of uh, that is copied from the nature that shows that nature has all uh, nature has developed the structure that is completely error free and completely safe even under worst scenarios and we have to learn so much from these Failures. and even uh, 
most of the bio inspired design and engineering not only not only engineering in other areas of engineering are also a paving way towards uh, this bio inspired design in the future so in the future we could also see engineering structures with different shape not only visually uh, appealing but also structurally stable right so other than uh, other than this is there any natural uh, structure it could be one single assembly or a group of assembly that will never fail even under worst scenario any any structure that you could relate it under the action of force it could be a wind it could be water it could be snow uh, it could be a sudden impact can can someone give an example okay how many of you have watched the the spider web can i see your hands up spider web okay someone messaged okay spider web when you see the design and uh, it will be attached on all only the corners and the web and the spider web will completely survive even if there is heavy wind flow right and even if you see all those lines inside the spider spider web it will have a proper symmetry geometry and everything that uh, we try to incorporate in the structure to be sustainable under the uh, in terms of material in terms of design but the nature the spider web has its own design in its gene it directly built the spider web and even you could see traps uh, the bugs that flies close to the spider web which means the spider web could hold the weight of the bug which is 5 to 10 times more than the weight of the spider web itself so even under the uh, impact load so even scientists are trying to identify uh, the stat uh, mechanics behind this spider web and they are also researching on the molecular structure of the spider web and they are trying to replicate Uh, and to make an engineered product related to spider web and even a, a lot of research is going on uh, to uh, to synthesize the material that is available in silk even the tensile strength of the silk uh, when we compare that with uh, steel it is three times or more than uh, thrice heavier than uh, steel the strength and even spider web is also uh, uh, evaluated and uh, recently i have also seen one of the video in tech talks the termite uh, built its structure and when they see the uh, the entire uh, structure of the particular termite nest it it has all these uh, uh, equations of equilibrium and uh, principles of superposition and even the material that the termite uses as also relating with the thermal coefficient the mud that it uses it secretes its certain uh, chemical substances from its own body to combine all these naturally available material so that it could be strong enough and even you could see the beetles that build small nest in the corner of a window when you try to break them and when you feel them it will be feeling very light but the material that they use has uh, structural stability and uh, the other example naturally available is honey hive you could see huge weight of the honey hive just uh, having a contact surface area of minimum contact surface area but the gravitation the law of gravitation completely fails in terms of honey hive so uh, we need to understand all this naturally available uh, principles of mechanics or solid mechanics in naturally available material in order to have a complete failure free structure in the future so with that note let me start with the theories of failure so we have uh, five theory and most of them are uh, studied in detail in uh, mtech structure and mtech uh, geotechnical and also in um, um Uh, mtech in uh, mechanical engineering so uh, one mysis is highly used in that 
and even principles of uh, theory of velocity and plasticity has all these uh, theories of failure in detail that is studied in the uh, in the last module of plasticity let us see just understand how uh, let us have just introduction about uh, these theory principles uh, maximum principle stress theory proposed by rankin and this rankin um, developed in late uh, eight, uh, is a complete old theory but still even now it has its application nowadays let me check whether the okay so here you could see the applications uh, uh, and the reason why we so want we to know so we are not seeing the screen sir ah yes ma'am no, just one second So these are the list of uh, theories of failure. Uh, you could see five theories of failure. Uh, even it has a uh, wide variety of application nowadays, not only in civil engineering, in other domains of engineering. And this is the video that uh, gives just basic introduction about theories of failure. Pardon me for not enabling the voice or voice or just observe. You could easily understand. So here you could see different assembly. So here you could see steel bridge, and you could see the cross section of the steel bridge. Here you could see a mechanical assembly, gear assembly. Here you could see a, 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 an assembly in the turbine. Here you could see on the left bottom a bridge fails, right? Here uh, the, the ultimate aim of having all, all these is see the geometry, see the cross section, and see the type of structure. Uh, material that is been used completely of different which have no interrelation or connection uh, between each other right and we need to understand its failure in order to avoid the failure and if we need to know the maximum amount of stress that particular failed material experience just before failing in order to improve the efficiency of the design and engineering the property to improve the behavior under failure to avoid failure so this failure theory uh, is essential to design any civil mechanical or even the same thing is also been used in um, dental application when they design bracings because imagine building undergoes a definite type of load either wind uh, seismic forces dead load of the structure but the bracing in the tree undergoes different types full push Our temperature, different types of food, and sometimes they'll also clean using uh, steel rods. And the metal that is used for steel bracings is completely composite, which will have uh, elastic and plastic behavior. And the tensile strain capacity is completely improved in order to account the wear and tear uh, action of the bracings inside the uh, teeth. so here you could see uh, someone lifting 50 kg of weight and that is a maximum amount of weight that this particular uh, person can lift but even if we add 1 kg more than 50 kg the person would collapse so similar type of behavior can also be observed if a structure is uh, the maximum allowable stress designed in a structure and if there is even a mi minimum amount of load acting on the structure in terms of natural calamities or unforeseen event the building structure will fail not only the building structure even any mechanical component will fail and even you could see uh, another picture that shows here you could see 50 kg is equally distributed uh, uh, lifted by the person with the two hand but if the person is having different magnitude or weight i mean weight of the uh, weight as shown here that is lifted by the person of unequal distribution the person would also collapse because of stability issue right so the failure of uh, the case 1 and failure of the case 2 will be completely different i hope you will also agree 
uh, with me here even if we add uh, a kg more than 50 kg at the maximum allowable uh, maximum weight that this person uh, has uh, practiced he will fail if if there is 1 kg increase in 50 but the same person is given with the different weights he would lose its stability and he would fail so there is a, a failure pattern there is a difference in the failure pattern though the load acting on the person will vary or will not so in order to understand that there is a failure is must also be known to design the structure in in his case uh, to practice based on the weight he should also know the type of weight that he is lifting you should also know the amount of weight that you could lift and there is another condition you could also ask let's say the person is completely trained and he knows how to lift the weight but he uh, uh, doesn't have enough energy or food uh, before or after before training that could also in other chances of failure that the reason why we have different theories of failure here you could see uh, an assembly which could be used in uh, uh, civil engineering on the right uh, uh, a shaft and the other assembly which is hollow uh, which is rectangle and the corner you could see there is a torque that is applied right and uh, what type of failure can we expect and where can we expect the failure and where is the maximum amount of stress that could be happening uh, is it will it be happening uh, on the place where it where the torque is applied or will it be happening when where there there is a load incline 30 or 40 degree or if the, uh, will the failure will be happening above the hollow because there is no solid material that will take care of this uh, pointed low downwards so in the first case on the uh, left side we can easily predict the failure just by knowing the type of material and by calculating the values of maximum stress but here in order to calculate the maximum value of stress one should know the location of the stress and uh, the type of the material if it is made up of a single type of material or if it is made up of a uh, uh, different composite material so you could also see the simple tension test and uh, uh, the same uh, material or different type of material in a mechanical assembly or any smaller component uh, in any engineering design so here we could we can use a simple uh, uh, stresses normal stress we can calculate by taking the cross sectional area and here we we have to go for the concept of principal stresses and principal plane to locate uh, the maximum stresses that is uh, that can that the structure can experience to identify the maximum stress so for the normal stress we can easily uh, get the relationship between stress and strain but in this case the other case we cannot get the value of normal stress so here we could also see there is another uh, material that has been taken where uh, the cross section is circular but it is varying throughout the section so the normal stress shear stress can be calculated not by just simply taking load divided by area or the relationship between stress and strain we need to take another relationship based on the cross sectional area and this is the parameters uh, or the relationship that could be used for uh, determining the simple stresses and the stresses in the principal plane for this we can either use uh, mohr circle analysis uh, for uh, get for predicting the value of maximum stresses or we could go for analytical method if we know the properties of the material that is being used for making this assembly so this is how uh, the uh, principal stresses and the planes can be uh, analyzed but analytically but now we have also have sophisticated software like ansys in order to analyze the maximum uh, analyze the structure or an assembly even uh, smaller uh, finite element size
so and even uh, we cannot directly apply uh, the stress theory on all material as i told you so the stress uh, the evaluation of the stresses will vary depending upon the type of material and if it is ductile there is a different type of uh, methods to evaluate the mechanical property of the material so this is for the steam and uh, uh, all the theory that whatever we have studied uh, will work good for uh, uh, this type of ductile material and the maximum principle strain theory uh, this theory will be award uh, can be awarded because uh, uh, as i told you it could not be applied for all the materials and this is the last theory uh, total strain theory this is the equation and this uh, total strain theory is good for uh, ductile materials but there comes a question are we using only ductile material and now forget about the past because uh, in the past uh, let us say all those uh, uh, building that is exi existing for more than 500 years all those temples completely built with stone without any reinforcement which is a complete uh, uh, stone without reinforcement but still it is surviving but no one knows the mechanism behind how it survives and even now we are investigating the structure for its stability right and these uh, four five uh, theories of failure and its applications will make us to understand and predict the failure if the structure is complex because for uh, for a structure which is made up of the same type of material we can apply simple stress theory but if it is a complex we can we have to go for the other uh, theories that we have uh, discussed this morning so these are the equations that you could see first one is maximum principle uh, stress theory and these are the equation to calculate uh, evaluate the value of stresses and the strain this is maximum shear stress theory to evaluate the value of uh, uh, maximum tensile uh, strength of the material and also the material in simple tension and this is maximum strain theory uh, where uh, you can calculate the value of strain energy per unit volume of the material and this is maximum shear uh, strain energy theory and this equation can be used uh, along with the relationship between uh, maximum allowable stress and uh, factor of safety So this theories of failure is uh, included in the first module for uh, undergraduate student in order to uh, use different type of material in the future because uh, compared to the construction and even in mechanical engineering we are not using the material that we used in the past uh, to make uh, to make it simple uh, earlier uh, the body of an automobile is completely made up of steel which is heavy in weight and uh, the stress carried uh, is completely different but now we are going for lightweight composite material which is very lightweight and the durability and the tensile behavior of those composites is much better than uh, the conventional steel body that is being used in what automobile uh, the body of the automobile similarly in civil engineering uh, since because of the urbanization and lack of space we create multi scrapers and we don't want the structure to be weighing very uh, huge so we want to make it lighter uh, make it more stronger and flexible in order to uh, uh, sustain the structure even uh, with the worst possible seismic forces that the structure can experience so with that note i conclude the discussion for the for module 1 i'll share all those slides uh, and the material that i've used i hope i made something useful for this 3 hours and some more oh to ma'am thank you thank you guys thank you sir so it was a very interesting session and both the sessions were very uh, informative and a lot of uh, animation animated videos so it was very nice
So any Actually, it, it, yes. it, it will be good if it is Microsoft team because uh, all those uh, audio can be easily audible. But there is a drawback with uh, Google Meet. We have to make something inside and and I tried twice. Anyways, thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. So any queries from the participants? Yeah, if not now, you can also send the queries to my mail ID k.arunkumar.ac.in and uh, if you would like to uh, collaborate anything related to composite, you can also contact because I'm working on the composites and uh, most of my scholars are working on the composites uh, um, and uh, materials related to construction. So I hope uh, you can and we can also collect feedback if it is required and i'll share you the complete details and i'll send i mean i'll share you the complete slides till you shortly after a day or two okay sir thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you thank you uh dear participants we'll have just a five minutes break and we'll uh, start the session again at 3 15 as per the schedule